the Wild Wild West here. Guess what we saw? 737-200, Lockheed Electra, and the C-46 Commando, <laughs> and the world famous Buffalo Mikey here. Oh, Sam, thanks for coming. This, these are some rare airplanes here, and we're happy to show you. Thank you for joining us, and let's see what we have here in the backyard. This is a one-of-a-kind airplane, the C-46 Commando. One of the very last in the world that I have to come all the way to Yellowknife, Buffalo to see this airplane. And for all the Afghan at home, this is history. 1940 mil airplane, still flying and ruling the sky here. It feels like in the back of the truck, but this is a fully loaded C-46. Wow, it's not even uh, having any empty space. No, this airplane fully loaded is roughly 45,000 pounds, so it's a lot of stuff in here. This is not 45,000 pounds, this cargo here. This is, this is 13,000. Oh, so the max takeoff weighs 45,000? Yeah, yeah for, well, 48. For the whole airplane, okay. right. So there's a whole truck that comes from Edmonton to Hay River. And the whole truck, the semi, it all gets loaded in here. Right, yeah. so the truck goes to Hay River, then yeah. by airplane come over here. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. how these daily free express work. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's it. All right. Nice work. <laughs> what are these tires for? What kind of tire? Airplane tires? Airplane tires, yeah. For the DC? I'm not sure. Oh. What do you do here? I'm a pilot in waiting. I'm a rampy. You started from a ramp. You started ramper and now you are waiting to become a pilot. Well, we all get a chance. I'm a pilot in waiting. He is. Oh, you all pilot in waiting. Yeah, yeah. Kinger. And yep. And I'm, I'm a 46 pilot and I'm currently going on the Lockheed Electra actually. Fantastic. Yeah. And then you all have to help out. You have to have to load a, uh, load uh, up for everybody. Yeah, there is no, there's no carrying. You gotta make your own bed, right? You're yeah, pilot. you have to do everything, huh? There's no, yeah, we're the ground crew. All right, I need you guys to move for a second. Even cheap so, pilot yeah. loads yeah. here. Yeah. Wow. You see all these courier, Amazon, all these e-commerce stuff and it's, Really interesting. It got carried by an old C-46 to get to this part of Canada. Yeah, pretty crazy, eh? 1940 plane and still doing courier service and all that stuff, eh? It's beyond amazing. Yeah. Well, they're good planes, man. Like, as long as you got parts for them, you can still fly them. Oh, yeah. Fly forever. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I bought some stuff on Amazon Prime and it just shows up in four days. Yeah, bad, this yeah. is the Amazon Prime airplane yep. in uh, Yellowknife. Even this is... Air freighted, toilet paper. Here you can see the whole fuselage now, the C-46. And uh, big airplane actually inside. Now pallets one by one coming out. And, like in half an hour now, the whole plane's empty. We're ready to get loaded on and take off. We're traveling back to the World War II times. No hydraulics on this. So everything's just controlled by hand got these old controls no all the steam gauges right no no g1000 or anything what kind of engine does c46 has it was two radial engines i believe they're pratt and whitney okay um, it feels like we're high up here like um 747 like a bubble yeah the cockpit goes pretty high up and... all right so you might notice from the tv show ice pilots the key word is ice normally it's really cold minus 40 coolest place in the world that any aircraft operate today very nice day sam picked the most beautiful time to be here this is our summer the last couple days but perfect time of year but winter's gonna be back in a couple weeks winter's coming winter's coming folks i was gonna say there's never a place as hot on the time back in the summer and as cold like the time in the winter yeah for and sure. uh, i'm so scared of that minus 40 <laughs> is normal for you I think I'm gonna build up some more fat inside and build up some more weight to come here. So where we go, there's no roads. You know, on Back to Future 2, where he says, uh, where are we going, we don't need roads? Up here, you don't need roads. The Curtis C-46 is your road. This aircraft is gonna be delivering supplies everywhere in the north as much as we can. So being an old piston-powered plane, they use what's called Avgas. Avgas is in general aviation and old transport planes. Look at the front, 100 low rev. That's the actual octane rating of the gasoline. This is how you refill the C-46. Get up there. Okay. Right here. This is the captain's shoulder. 
Yes, you're refueling now? Yes, sir. How many gallons? I'll take 292. The front can take 232. And the rear can take 175 gallons. Oh, there's three fuel tanks. In yes. the front, in the wing, and the rear. Yep. Try to clean the oil, or yeah, I clean the oil. You gotta wipe the oil down every day. But every time when it lands, you yeah, do this. Yeah, it's not because the seals inside uh -huh. they'll start leaking. Oh, okay. You don't do that. Oh, that's oil tank right there. Oh my God, it looks yeah. so. Yeah, it's really hot right now. Yeah, you can feel the heat coming yeah. off. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Try to lift this up. Oh, dumbbells. Dumbbells. Let me see. Oh Lord, heavy. So oil. So behind me, the Curtis C46 is just doing a maintenance run before a big trip today. And this is kind of stuff you do to make sure the is good because where they're going, there's no maintenance. So you gotta make sure everything's running good. Pretty hard, you had to push up. Yep. The plane is sloping down. So many 747 MD11 loads in the palace by itself, but here, this is all manual work, man. You need lots and lots of muscles, and every little inch counts. <laughs> oh no, flying's a bitch too. I told you how there's no hydraulics, right? The flying's hard as well. I felt this is the hardest part. Oh. And you can see it kind of has the Lufthansa logo on the nose because this thing actually flew for Lufthansa in the 1960s. And uh, yeah, every operator that's operated the airplane since then has kept the nose arch and kind of tradition. So that's why, that's gonna be the number one question. Especially with the airline guys, why is that nose art on there? And there's the answer. But it's our workhorse. This aircraft has an amazing cargo door, very heavy floor. And look at the size of those tires. Those tires are as big as any aircraft in the world today, so it can go pretty much anywhere. What's it like to fly a C-46 trailer? Uh, it's actually really, really good. Yeah, I've been doing it for 30 years. It's a really cool airplane. And What's the speed like on this airplane? Uh, it's it's a slower airspeed. It's only 160 knots, but it's a cargo hauler, right? So it works really good. We clear! So after an hour hardware labor loading, here it is, it's going now. And I have camera mounted inside. And I can't wait to see the footage, what it looks like to fly the C-46.
come inside, follow me. I just want to show you how big this cockpit is. It's like so far away, my uh, co-pilot sitting there and like, you know, this is one of the biggest prop cockpits I've ever seen. You know, interesting, two and two engine throttles split up between, oh wait, there's actually four, one, two, three, four here. So, you know, each of the captain and the co-pilot has four engine throttle. So a lot of Electra and Electra operations, a lot of times the the flight engineer actually operates the throttles. Oh, the, it's two hands. Yep, or <laughs> one hand, two hands, but the the pilots usually stay on the yokes. I see. The Hercules mm -hmm. and the TriStar all have big cockpits. It's just a trait of Lockheed manufacturing. A lot of space in the cockpit. What kind of engine Electra has? Allison 501 DK. It's the same engine that's on the C-130 Hercules and the Convair 580. It's a very powerful engine and a very common engine. bearing grease. Grease. Yeah, basically it's red color. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's messy, fun stuff. Right now we're moving, but we're actually under tow, and uh, we're going to load up the cargo on the Lucky Electro. What's it like to fly on an Electra? Oh, it's nice. It's nice and fast, nice and warm in the winter time. Uh, Need lots of muscles, like very well, manual. All these uh, controls are boosted, 3,000 pounds of boost on them, so there's no problem with you know, flying it that way. Does it fly better in uh, winter or summer? Always in winter, because it likes nice fat air. Mmm, <laughs> plane doesn't like heat, yeah. <laughs> no airplane likes hot air. What's your favorite airplane to fly on, Captain? I like to fly airplanes that keep their wings off. That's a good answer. <laughs> Brom, the only sad part of the Electra is in its early days, the wings actually came off the plane. That's not a good airplane if no. it came off. But once they fixed it, it was one of the safest planes ever. What's, what's the cargo today like? Uh, we'll have 20 of those rolls, 16 foot long, 410 pounds each. We got some explosive over there. Explosive? The yellow yeah. forklift. Okay. And yeah, that's about it for today. For mining? Yep. Today's a bit of a weird one. We got some uh, overhanging stuff. It's just standard, it's gonna fit on the sheet, but today we'll have to set up the sheet so we can put some longer piece in. Okay. It seems like you're much more than just a pilot flying the plane. Yeah, do you're doing everything here. Yeah. <laughs> the captain actually has to load the airplanes as well. Yeah. You can see the doors on the Lockheed Electra is oversized, so that's why the tubes can go in very easily. Very interesting for myself to see all these all size cargo and later explosive getting inside the airplane. Uh, Buffalo Airways flight uh, 1209 on the August the 9th of 2022. We've got uh, a heading outbound, uh, pretty much true north, uh, and then uh, it'll take us 58 minutes to get up to our destination, which is Goose Lake, which is an exploration camp for gold mining. 
We'll be at uh, 17,000 feet. According to our uh, flight plan here, we're gonna have uh, 23,846 pounds of uh, payload. What's our speed on this airplane, sir? Uh, speed will be, uh, he's got here 320 knots, so I don't think we have any wind up northbound or southbound. So 320 knots loaded on the way north and 340 knots on the way. That's our weight and balance point right there, that little triangle. Pretty with the front, little, front seat. Here. It's forward, yeah, a little forward, we don't mind it. And just because we have a stack of sheets in the back, and that's all, we got an empty airplane, it actually sits right on the, uh, the very forward limit. Uh, Electra is a naturally nose-heavy airplane, so we always have to have weight in the, in the very back of the airplane in order to uh, make it balanced and fit within the center of gravity. Today they got explosive on board so I'm not gonna get on board but I have cameras so we'll see how the pilot's gonna fly the Lockheed Electric. We went to Goose Lake there at uh, 17,000 feet and uh, it's a 4,500 foot trip in uh, Nunavut. It's uh, about 270 miles to the northwest of uh, Yellowknife. It's uh, a yeah, 4,500 foot trip. It's a gravel runway and uh, we used our reverse when we arrived there. We got quite a bit of runway left and it's a uh, yeah, nice little strip. like there is there anyone live there or what no, is it it's, like? uh, just a mine there's no community or nothing it's basically just a mine it's getting close to the Bathurst Inlet and in the, from the uh, ocean there Back here we were uh, about uh, flight level 200. It was a nice beautiful VFR day. We were running about 340 knots the whole way uh, coming back from Goose Lake. We did a beautiful left uh, visual on runway 10 in Yellowknife. And uh, yeah, it was uh, really good. We could see all the lakes, all the wilderness around here. It's uh, really uh, quite the location here. It's a pretty unique place.
tell us like what's the winter flying condition and what was it like to fly in the winter in here? Normally uh, we don't uh, care about icing as people might uh, might uh, think we might, but uh, it's normally too cold to end up with icing. What you got to worry about is the winds, because when you get up onto the barren land, there's really nothing to stop the wind. So once it starts blowing, it's going to start blowing, and normally that's about three days of uh, blow, and you end up with drifting snow, whiteout conditions. Um, you get up where there's no definition of between the ground and the sky. Everything's white. It's like flying in a milk bowl. So those are the most difficult things to handle in the Arctic. Plus, the weather patterns are different. As I was telling you before, the uh, uh, low pressure area up in the Arctic usually means good weather and high pressure area means bad weather. The altimeters on these airplanes go all the way to top scale, which on this airplane would be 3104. I've seen pressure settings higher than that in wow. the Arctic. And then all the way to the bottom of the, the scale, which would be on this airplane, 2802. You don't normally see that in normal operation flying because people figure sea level 2992, that would be about it. But I've seen it lower than that in the Arctic as well. And remember, the atmosphere in the Arctic is, is uh, narrower, shall we say, than you would have at the equator. It's, and sometimes we've, we've actually flown into the tropopause up at uh, 32,000 feet and other airplane types. And, uh, and you end up with uh, a steady, I think it's minus 72 uh, outside air temperature. And that that could be um, uh, outside of your allowable limits for uh, the airplane itself because the fuel in your tanks gets cold and the fuel heaters and the engines might not be warm or warming up enough in order to uh, ignite it. So you've got to watch out for things like that. If there's one word you can give about winter flying, what would that be? It would only be cold. <laughs> <laughs>